Today, I wanna see if there's a real difference between spending $25 on a iPhone lens and a $200 lens. All right, so this is actually the second time I'm making this video because you guys gave me a lot of feedback. This little lens right here comes with a clip. The clip makes uh, for a not so great seal to the phone, creating a lot of weird flares and a lot of extra out of focus stuff. And so I'm back out getting some more test footage. I didn't know these types of lenses had a standard 17 millimeter size. So this beast cage actually comes with a plate for these lenses. And so all the footage you're gonna see compared, hello geese, aren't you supposed to be south? Are going to be compared using the same iPhone 14 Pro Max, using the same beast cage, and we can just take out these plates and go from the lower cost lens to the beast grips 1.7 telephoto lens here. Uh, so it's all gonna be switched out. And so this way we should get much more fair, much better results and see what really is the difference between a lower cost option and a $200 lens for your phone. So even though phones now have pretty much three lenses all attached to them, you get an ultra wide, wide and telephoto, they're not all created equal because they all have different sensors. And so we like to use the best sensor possible. And this is where adding physical lenses on top of that good sensor can sometimes be beneficial. Beast Grip, of course, sent out their brand new 1.7X telephoto lens. So first, let's talk about the build quality. Now, there's a pretty apparent size difference between the two, and that's pretty important. Of course, the smaller may be more convenient, but if we were to take a look at those front lens elements here, you can see that there's a substantial size difference in the actual glass being used. The Beast Grip lens also has a 58 millimeter thread inside, so I can add NDs, polarizers, mist filters, so you can add more to the look or the style of it. This smaller, cheaper one here doesn't have any sort of thread, so there's definitely no adding more filters on top of it. So let's see what the actual quality looks like now. So after taking a look at this sample footage, it was really interesting. See, by using the clip that the Apex or whichever cheaper lens this was came with, you are not getting the highest quality that the lens itself can achieve. It actually perfectly reminded me of this. This is a newer microphone that I bought off Amazon a couple years ago for $18. And it came with a XLR, to three and a half millimeter mic jack that you plug into a computer. And it sounds not that great. But if you take out that cable and you take a XLR to XLR and that goes into an audio interface, which then goes into the computer, a much more professional setup, your $18 mic sounds so much better. This $25 lens put in the beast cage, which properly creates a nice tight seal, doesn't allow for any light leakage, you are going to optimize the lower cost lens as much as possible, giving you a much better look than the cheap clip that it comes with. And if you liked the look of it, great. But still, as a professional, I can see why you would spend $200 on the beast grip lens. Again, it's no different than spending a couple hundred dollars on a cheap photography kit lens or a couple thousand on a nicer cinema lens. While the kit lens in the right scenarios will still look really good and make you even think why would anyone spend more money, when you start really analyzing things, you do see the difference. For example, the cheaper lens here did seem to change the minimum focus distance. When I got the shot of Michelle playing on her phone, I was holding the phone at the same exact distance. I basically was holding on the edge of the table each time. 
And using the B-script lens, I was able to give focus on her phone, whereas the lower cost lens, I was not able to achieve focus. I had to scooch further back. And even then, every time the focus was much softer. And in all of these shots, there's a lot less contrast. Now I got some comments on the first upload that talked about, well, the softer lens looks more cinematic, which I totally get what you're saying. You don't want something to look over sharpened and the iPhone tends to over sharpen video already. And so adding a really sharp lens on top of that, you're just getting a really, really sharp image. But what I would say to that is I'd much rather have a tack sharp image that I can then actually soften in post in something like DaVinci Resolve, rather than an image that looks more muddy and like out of focus soft that I could try to artificially sharpen afterwards, but is definitely not gonna look as good. So ultimately, it's your money. Pick which lens you like best. I find it very cool that the Beast Cage is so versatile to where it can fit other lenses. I know it came with a moment adapter, but I didn't know it came with this, I'm guessing it's a 17 millimeter lens adapter. Anyways, thanks Beast Grip for sending out this new lens for me to test out. Thank you to all you for the very valid feedback. Hopefully this video seemed a lot more fair. My intention in the first upload was the fact that when you bought this lens, it came with this clip. And so that is the intended use of a $25 lens is to spend $25 and use what it came with. Whereas the Beast Grip lens is intended to be used with the Beast Cage. But I totally get where you all were coming from. Hopefully this video solves your problems. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you in the next video.